What is that sin that you've been clinging to? What is it, people? What is that thing that you, you, you once had a white robe and it's spotted? There's something on it. God can see it. The devil can see it. Humans around you can't. It's a secret sin. Nobody even knows, or hardly anybody. Maybe a couple of family members know about it. You don't show it to anybody. You walk in these doors and you're faking it real good. Are you a Christian? You're going to survive Judgment Day in front of a judge like that? Really? You think you are? Think you are? What will your sin do to you in that day? This is how much God hates sin. He sent Jesus to go through the passion to get rid of it. That's how much he cannot stand sin. He allowed his precious lamb to be slaughtered, to be whipped to an inch of his life, to have the flesh torn off his back, to have the crown of thorns stuffed on his head, pain unbearable. That's how much God hates sin. If he finds it in you, he will put you as far from himself as he can. Are you hearing his voice calling you, young man, to cut off the right hand of lust, indulged in the chambers of your mind with magazines and books that you've hid from mum and dad and perhaps wife, you women, mental fantasies, Nurtured by your television set and your daytime soaps with their sordid, tawdry, vile, and filthy, adulterous lace cloth. Are you taking every step necessary to stop feeding your lust? Or you just occasionally have a little whimper in the closet when your conscience gets so active you can't live with it. And you whimper and cry and ask God for a little help and then you go right back with your hand and your eyeball firmly attached. Oh yes, once in a while you take a dull paring knife and scratch your hand, and occasionally you, you scratch around your eyeball, but you haven't begun to cut off and pluck out. You better listen to the words of Jesus. Not everyone who says, Lord, Lord, shall enter, but he that does the will of my Father in heaven. If ye by the Spirit do mortify the deeds of the flesh, ye shall live. The culture we live in is really not helping us, folks. This culture is not increasing the sensitivity of our conscience, is it? Oh, no. No, no. You watch TV, it'll desensitize you. Go to the movies, listen to the music, read the books. It's just bashing your conscience. Nobody's perfect. This is the hypocrite's couch. This is the believer's bed of thorns. Nobody's perfect. That's the hypocrite's couch. He lies back, no serious determination to do the will of God, who says nobody's perfect. The true child of God, no one is perfect. It's my bed of thorns. Wretched man that I am, I find that when I would do good, evil is present with me. To will is present, but to perform I know not. That's the of thorns. Is the imperfection of your obedience your couch or your bed of thorns? Now my friend, it can't be both. It's one or the other. And I'm asking you, not knowing if I'll ever stand in this pulpit again, you better answer with as much honesty sitting where you sit tonight as Christ will make you answer in the day of judgment. Many people who wouldn't be boldly evil in their conversation and they wouldn't be boldly evil in their behavior are boldly evil in their mind. A man who abstains from sexual sin because he's afraid of getting caught and well be indulging in a thousand fantasies. 
because he thinks nobody's going to discover the private sin, I'll tell you who will discover it, your conscience. And your conscience will produce shame and guilt and fear and doubt and worry and steal your joy. To indulge in sins of thought is to molest the conscience directly. And nothing will damage your conscience more than the habit of evil thinking. Thought sins work directly on the conscience. He got baptized straight away. Why? Because you've got to deal with sin fully. And you don't muck around with things like that because it'll kill you. It'll kill you. And if you don't have the full experience, man, if you aren't repenting and getting baptized and receiving the Holy Spirit, the whole nine yards filled to here to overflowing with the Spirit of God, I don't believe you'll last. In those days, I would say they would not even consider you to be part of them yet. They would say, these people are inadequate under God. We've got to get them, you know, you see it all the way through the book of Acts. From beginning to end, repent, be baptized. You shall receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. Why do we cut people short today? Why do we shortchange people? Why do people go to our crusades and not truly end up defeating sin? Why do 95% of people who go forward at crusades fall away within a few weeks? Jesus, Jesus is a friend of mine, and all that. We act like the gospel is a kind of Colgate commercial. And if you, you know, we used to have this ad in New Zealand. And if you, if you brush your teeth with Colgate, you get this little ring of confidence. Ding! And of course, you can smile forever after that, because you've got it. And of course, it's a fake load of garbage, but sadly, a lot of people walking into our congregations are getting the same opinion of Christianity that it's kind of like this fake little commercial and everybody gets the little ding of confidence and walks around smiling and it ain't really there. It never was in half the cases and in a lot of cases, sadly, it once was the truly there and it's been lost. And all that remains is the shell of Christianity that walks into church buildings and stands and claps and does all the routine, the little parade and the little dance that we do. And it's gone.